Welcome to this video from IFR for NPO, where we explain the proposals on revenue from donations in kind, included in INPAG Exposure Draft 2, Section 23, Part 1. Specifically, we will cover aspects of recognition, measurement and disclosure, for gifts in kind, and services in kind. Our goal is to make the proposals accessible, to stimulate feedback from stakeholders. There are four videos relevant to donations in kind in this series, and we recommend watching them in order. First, we have a video called, Common Model for Grant Revenue and Expenses, which introduces new terms. Next is Revenue from Grants and Donations, explaining general recognition principles. This video focuses on specific exemptions and disclosure requirements for donations in kind. Lastly, inventories is relevant in cases of donated inventory. Links to these videos are in the YouTube description. Nonprofit organizations, NPOs, may receive revenue from grants and donations. In INPAG, these are classified as either an enforceable grant arrangement, an EGA, or an other funding arrangement, an OFA. This is explained further in the common model video. NPOs may also receive goods or services that are donated in kind. The principles for revenue recognition that apply to cash revenue also apply to donations in kind. For OFAs, donations in kind are recognized on receipt. For EGAs, revenue is recognized as enforceable grant obligations are met. Whenever donations in kind are recognized in the financial statements, they are measured at fair value. This concept comes from existing accounting standards, and it means the amount that would be received or paid in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. Fair value can be a challenge for donated goods or services in cases where there is no market or where the value to the giver differs from the value to the receiver. INPAG Section 12 on fair value will be issued as part of Exposure Draft 3. It will remain largely unchanged from the source material in IFRS for SME, but some application guidance is proposed to address donations. Taking account of the practical difficulties in recognizing and measuring donations in kind, some exceptions are proposed, but only for OFAs. EGAs have specific recognition requirements, so exceptions aren't applicable. Let's start with gifts in kind, that is, donations of goods or other assets. Exceptions are proposed to reflect cost-benefit considerations. The cost of reliably measuring goods and other assets when they are received may be more than the value of the information to financial statement users. There are no exceptions for NPOs receiving donations of non-current assets, such as vehicles or buildings. Both the asset and the revenue are recognized on receipt, measured at fair value. The first permitted exception concerns low-value items donated for resale. Recognition can be delayed until the items are sold, measured at the sale amount. This avoids the need to assign a fair value to each item. The next permitted exception relates to items that have been donated for the NPO's own use or for onward distribution. Revenue recognition can be delayed until the items are used or distributed. This avoids the NPO having to recognize revenue for items it can't use or distribute, which is particularly relevant for perishable items close to expiry. In rare circumstances, an NPO might be unable to reliably measure the value of the donated items. For example, a small NPO responding to an emergency that lacks the resources to keep records for large volumes of donated items, which are distributed almost immediately. In such cases, where measurement is not practically possible, the NPO should not recognize revenue, but should make disclosures instead. The same general recognition principles also apply to services in kind. This includes receiving donated time, skills or services as there can be significant practical difficulties in identifying and measuring services in kind, INPAG proposes to focus on those that are mission critical. This distinction provides transparency about the operating model of an NPO, 
particularly its reliance on volunteers or donated services. Mission-critical services are those that are vital to the NPO's operations. Without them, the NPO would have to materially reduce its level of activities. An example would include an NPO that provides telephone counselling services, where most of the counsellors are volunteers. Administrative services such as accountancy or legal are deemed to be non-critical unless they directly support service recipients. NPOs should recognise mission-critical services, provided the value can be reliably measured. Income and expense are recognised at the same time to reflect the value of the service that has been received and that it has been used or expended straight away. In rare cases where income can't be recognised, INPAG requires additional disclosures. For non-critical services, recognition is permitted but not required. Disclosure is encouraged, particularly if estimates of the value can be made. Information about services in kind will be useful to financial statement users and improve transparency about the NPO's operations. Whenever one of the permitted exceptions is used, INPAG requires additional disclosures. For gifts in kind, NPOs should disclose a description of the items, the exception that has been used, and why. Where mission-critical services in kind are not recognised, NPOs must make disclosures. They must describe the services and why they are mission-critical, as well as any other quantitative information that would be useful for transparency, such as the number of days or number of volunteers. To further support transparency, NPOs are also encouraged to disclose a best estimate of the value of any donations in kind received, but not recognised as revenue. In summary, NPOs generally recognise revenue from donations in kind, at fair value, on receipt, when part of an other funding arrangement. INPAG includes some exceptions that take account of cost-benefit considerations. For gifts in kind, NPOs can choose to apply permitted exceptions to recognition. For services in kind, NPOs must recognise revenue if the services are mission critical. Whenever revenue is not recognised on receipt, NPOs are encouraged to disclose useful information. We look forward to hearing your feedback on the proposals in Exposure Draft 2. The invitation to comment includes questions on the proposals explained in this video. To respond, visit www.ifr4npo.org slash have your say. Download a template response document and upload your completed response or comment letter. Responses must be in English. The deadline is the 15th of March. 2024.